Welcome back to another episode of Corota Motors. We started our automation playthrough in this campaign with no money and a tiny factory. Why? Because Corota was nothing but a failed scooter company. Since then, however, our revenue has only grown and grown. You can see here on this graph, we started off with barely any money coming in. And after every gap where we build our factories, it's just a chunk more revenue. Our first car, the Coniglio, is looking very successful, and it's coming time to replace it with an entirely new model. Now that the 60s are upon us, it's time to modernize. But before we get to that, a little bit of history. Why did we start with a tiny factory and no money? You can see this map of the world here in the automation light campaign. We are in the country Fruinia. Now the lore has it that before 1946, much like in our world, there was a huge war. And we, Fruinia, were on the wrong side of it. Only partway through, I guess we changed sides, much like Italy. We gave up the island of Vianta to Gaznia the large allied nation which won the war, ultimately. Now Gasmia is importing cars to Fruinia, only we won't be able to sell cars to them until 1970. Feels like a raw deal to me. And that means that the company Dunbar 3, thanks to OB Tanker from Discord, is our rival now. They're selling cars to compete with us. And also thanks to my uh, bit of save game hacking. Back during the war, we were trying to sell our scooters, but their much more effective motorcycles put us out of business. We lost the military contracts once Gazmi was on our side. Now we've got a rivalry. We hate these jerks. Only I think the cars they're selling are more premium oriented. Yeah, I can look and we see their, their cars are selling pretty well in the luxury market. They are the sixth largest luxury car seller in Fruinia right now, or in in the three countries we have available to us, including Hevasia and Deluja. But enough about other companies, how are we doing? I think that's best answered by just looking at our monthly sales. Actually, I think we covered this last time. We're at about 100 cars a month in the city market. Our second biggest market is Commuter, which is similar at 80 cars and related markets. And we have a lot of pre-orders backed up. So we, we need to expand to a bigger factory as well. And in fact, this is a bit of a goofy thing to try. Before we go designing our next car, I might see if I can upgrade the factory that is making the E version of the Coniglio before we, we do that. Because once we start an engineering process that calls for this factory to be retooled, it'll be locked in. Or, uh, you know what? No, it's actually at small three. The most we can do is, like, build a second factory or something. And that would also call for our engine factory to get bigger, because it would be very overworked. I think we're not going to do that right now. What we will do is increase the price... ...on our cars. I am just getting a Lua error when I try to use the Forecaster. Hopefully that's not because I cheesed my save file. But I'm going to wait a few months until Advanced 60s Safety is in. Because I do want to use that in our next car. Actually, dang, we are bringing in a lot of money. So the next car will just be a successor to the Coniglio. It will be the Coniglio 2. And we took a poll on the layout of this car. So we're looking at this uh, two meter wheelbase 60s body. The hatchback will be our primary version. And we are probably looking at aluminum and ladder frame, but I will get a quote on, on steel presses and see if we can really go nuts with making this car cheaper. I'm sticking to, I think, double wishbones all around, which is, again, kind of an expensive suspension choice, but I think it's worth it for us. And the engine will be the Linita. 
Why a new engine? Because if we want to make this car front wheel drive, we need an engine that is very short. So we're looking at a Boxer 4. Thinking a square size, 80 millimeter bore and stroke gives us a 1.6 uh, liter engine. It's a little bigger than our last one. And we are going to stick with the direct acting overhead cam that we had in our last engine. We will continue to build familiarity in dual overhead cam from doing this. That's a very expensive option both to build and engineer. And it's probably what we want to hope for uh, later on in the future. But for now, direct acting overhead cam. So it's a single cam with no rockers. You can actually see that here. That's what it looks like. And just cast iron. It's reliable. So just had a quick comparison. We have an engine that's looking a lot more powerful than our old Maratona. Hence the, uh, the name Lenita for this. That's a dash or sprint. And uh, it's actually not quite as fuel efficient, but I think we can bring that back with time as we add some quality points in. Because I'm not going very high on quality points. I want to keep that low for our first engineering. But we'll, we'll have room to add that in later. And it's looking a lot more reliable. The, uh, the family design year matters a lot for that. That is to say, the, the first time you build your engine, the family design year is locked in. And if you want to improve the stats that are associated with that, you have to design an all new engine. Variants don't update that. So that kind of represents that your engine is, in fact, old, no matter how many tweaks you make to it. And uh, reliability is a big factor in that. And weight is really the other one, I think. So this lets us make our car front-wheel drive, which uh, is visually a little bugged right now in that there is an all-wheel drive box stuck on it that really shouldn't be there. But you can see that it drives the front wheels and the engine's out in front of the transmission still. And we have a lot of the lovely features we're accustomed to such as radial tires. Did I not unlock the 60s safety? Come on. I waver that specifically. So I guess that, uh, oh, no, once I click, once I click an option, then I can go up to 1960s. I guess I will take it. And that's going to help this car be kind of long lived. Because uh, it, it's very expensive to change your safety types. You want to pick the newest one you can and not have to change it later. Now, uh, before I do all my tuning, we've got the visual design of the car that I have uh, prepared ahead of time. So first we paste the morphs. He's shaped like that. And we have our paint. And then we have our fixtures. We still have the classic crappy aluminum finish instead of chrome. That is a uh, Corotta trademark. We also have the actual Corotta trademark, my little carrot badge. We have some bumps in the hood that make room for our boxer heads. Not that you really need that, I think, but we like to show the car as a boxer. And we have... Uh, what I like to think might not be the ugliest grill in the world. I went through some pretty ugly ones when I was trying to come up with one for this car. Ended up with a very Alfa Romeo design. Then around back here, I, uh, I tweaked the seam so that this whole thing is a tailgate instead of just the top of it being... It, it didn't really look like for a hatchback in the original car body. And now, uh, okay... 
I can't get the advanced trim settings to close. That's another fun bug that we have here. But I don't think it will stop me from uh, working with the car. I do think I should have made a third one of these. That seems like an oversight. There we go. And there it is, the Coniglio. Two. And this will be the, the Primo edition, which has premium interior. Now I will take a few minutes to properly tune everything. So let's look at what we've got here. The engine, aside from being a uh, boxer instead of a inline engine, our design principles are very similar. Actually, I think I can afford to take a little of this balancing mass out. There's a couple points of reliability and some smoothness, but, but we get that throttle response. This is shaping up to be a surprisingly sporty car. High compression, low cams, low springs. Uh, everything is just kind of tuned for efficiency at the, the lower end. We still have a single eco car, which I had to make pretty big to handle this engine, but it's fine. You get a tiny bit of fuel efficiency by doing the fuel map, but it just destroys my throttle response. I'm going to leave it right at 50, honestly. Cast exhaust headers, reverse flow mufflers, keep it quiet. And then the car itself, we still have three speeds. Our first gear is a little more reasonable at a little over 30 miles an hour. And we managed to get uh, 11 sportiness out of this thing, which I think is not bad. Tires, they're very tiny. 155 millimeters is not a lot. Uh, I do want to check... Am I getting a low profile penalty? Because I'm like, I like the widest I can make them right now. What I'm looking for is this material cost here gets a lot cheaper as I make them bigger. And I'm not hitting any point where that happens. So I think I'm okay. Top speed is almost 90 miles an hour. Not quite. Brakes, they're still drum brakes. They're not very good. But we have the car stopping at least. Manual power steering. Are we getting a warning for that? Uh, we have engine clearance warnings. Apparently the engine's a little on the big side. Consider reducing engine length. Consider reducing engine width. Thank you. Overdrives we get for gas mileage. Slightly reducing drivability and comfort with no power steering. But uh, I'm going to stick with that. I might, I might make the engine like a 1.5 instead. We're still making 50 horsepower. I give up that little bit of size to keep my stroke. We're not stressing it out any. Service costs are, I'm guessing that's reasonable at $745 a year to keep the car running. Well, I would say we could compare it to an existing car and see our stats, but uh, that button is gray for me. I'm not sure why that is. Now we can make our uh, baseline or merde trim. And I also find that the click to compare cars button is back to being functional. Uh, ooh, hmm. Uh, how, how do we compare? That works. Compared to the old Primo, we are a lot less prestigious. I don't know why that is. And a lot less comfortable. We already, oh, I just selected premium. Right, standard. You're a little less prestigious and a little less comfortable. I'm not entirely, again, sure why that is. But uh, we're, we drivability is better. That's a big stat. We're a lot more sporty, which I like. Uh, Fruinians like that a little bit in every market. And we get some overlap with the uh, fun market, which is like your hot hatch kind of thing. Safer, obviously. More practical. We are smaller, which is better for city markets. We are noticeably more reliable. That's important to us, too. 
Now back to standard interiors. That hurts comfort and prestige, of course, but it is what it is. This is my gearing where I wanted it. I'm not sure it is. Yeah, I get the best gas mileage for a little bit off of peak speed. That's fine. We're not a prestige brand that depends on speed as much. Ah, and tweaking the interior weight has caused us to uh, have some steering angle problems, uh, some oversteer problems. And a little suspension adjustment will help that. So there is the lovely blue color for our baseline ship box trim. And in our factory size, we do probably have room for a third trim, but I'm going to save that for after we've got our initial engineering done. We'll look at the options. We could do like a wagon or a convertible or something. Baseline time of 55 months. I think we can get that down. Yeah, to 48. That looks good. We can wait four years. We do want our reliability and stuff to be not too low. And we're at the point where we might want to start getting a second factory, but I'm not sure if I want to do the big expansion for the engine factory to cover both car factories. At least not right away. And we are finding that we benefit from a lower automation. Uh at least for our initial base lift here, because our, our, our automation slider in the engineering for the car is not that high. And uh, it looks like we should print money here. We can sell the car for $10,000 and sell make huge margins. Now, we are projected to have a loan or a total project cost of $40 million. Our loan will easily cover that. Uh, we have the option of going to 200%, which is the maximum it will give us at all. So that makes me want to go back and check something. If I change the car to require steel presses, which will change the nature of the project a lot, will the bank give us that loan? Because if they will, it might be worth it to, uh, to take that huge loan. It's going to be a big upfront cost, but it'll make our cars both better and cheaper in the long run. Just to hold stats here. We would apparently lose some drivability and sportiness uh, and gain some weight. But we would save 20 man hours per car, which is enormous. And we gain a lot of safety. And some of this is probably because we haven't tuned a suspension for this either. I'm not going to tune it, though. I'm just going to skip through the project and see if we can get the loan. It would necessarily have to go into a new factory, and that will not not be cheap. No, sir. And initially, even says it'll be more expensive per car, but that's trying to pay off a hundred, two hundred million dollar set of steel presses. Ooh, and the car will take longer to engineer by a lot. That's another factor. But I just want to see. Ooh, we can get ninety three percent loan coverage. That is. That's really squeaking by. That's close. And it would make a big, big difference. This model would be a lot longer lived if we could squeeze it into that larger factory. Although then again, we would also need to upgrade our engine factory. Otherwise, we'll be in deep trouble in terms of our actual production numbers. We won't be able to put engines in our cars. 85%. I could risk the whole company on the prospect that our Coniglio one will bring us in enough revenue to pay for this. And uh, do you know what? I think I might. So give me another few minutes. I'm going to retune the car. So there, I made some small little changes to the uh, suspension. I made the engine up to 1.6 again, and we are looking 
pretty attractive here. I'm also making sure to set different target markets because if I have, uh, export this as a competitor's file, it'll only make both cars in the company if they're different target markets. And, uh, yeah, that's projected to make us a lot of money once again. I, I think more money? I'm not sure. We'll be actually selling these for more, uh, a higher price, uh, despite being made out of cheaper steel to pay for the factory initially. But when I have to, I do have to spend a little on getting the car done on time. Okay. Process is, is not going to be so hot. Reliability, we are going to cut some corners. And I'm just going to whip uh, our engineers a little harder. And we can get this done in 48 months. We will have to make up these sliders later, uh, ideally in later facelifts. And this also means that the small factory where the Coniglio 1 is made uh, is still going to be there. So there, we're getting a... I'm trying to understand the numbers here. The projected combined cost of this project is $295 million. The loan amount is 315 million or 14 million, but that's only 86% of the coverage I need. I'm not sure how that works, but at the rate we are earning money, I'm hopeful that in four years, we'll be able to cover that factory construction. And uh, ideally we put a new model in that small factory. But as a stopgap for now, I am going to update the Coniglio 1. So it'll be on sale at the same time as the Coniglio 2, as silly as that is, uh, with the new engine. And apparently, despite being, again, made of aluminum, these will end up being our cheaper cars in that we're not uh, accounting for some tooling cost. So let's mark them down. That might cause some negative competition. But I guess it is what it is. So there's our weird project plan with a lone wheel Try to pay off in a stupidly long amount of time because I'm a little nervous about our ability to actually do that. So some of our revenue here that we see is the loan itself, but most of it is car sales. And we're making a good profit. I'm not going to up my marketing too terribly much right now because I know that we need some cash reserves because it's gonna, we're gonna lose money when these factories are under construction. Now that we are in 1960, let's check on our competitors. In the family market, we are pretty far down. We must be the uh, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24th largest seller in the family market. With 153 cars, by the way, which is actually not bad. It looks like our sales numbers are on the way up when you can count for all countries. I don't think our cars are on sale in Arcana yet, which is just unlocked. But uh, Hetvasia, Perunia, Deluja, all together. Family is our second biggest market. And City is our first. I don't think uh, we have to worry too much about our rival Dunbar 3 in the markets that we're currently targeting, but maybe we'll need to try and take them down a peg in their luxury or wherever they are. So we're currently the 7, 8, 9, 10th biggest seller in city in the markets we have access to, which is, which is okay. We did start from like nothing. Meanwhile, Dunbar 3's Model 1 seems to be their main selling car right now. They're up to Mark 3 facelift, apparently. 
And they're still selling some Mark IIs as well. The convertible being their best seller, go figure. Looking at their different markets, I think that's the only stuff they're selling right now is their Model 1. All right. So the... Yeah, the Coniglio 1 is still on back order. People want that thing. And now that we're building factories, the... Uh, Oh, there, there's our first red month. We are right on the edge of uh, profits. But it's okay. It's a long time to build that medium factory. More than a year. Almost two years. And a year out from when our car is going to release is probably a good time to spend some money on marketing. I probably want to add another 500000 worth. Put one point in a sportiest and prestige. Point of drivability, safety, reliability. And Hitvasia, we care about them too. Now, Arcana has opened up recently, and they like cheap cars. We make cheap cars. I don't think we're going to sell much to them insofar as... Uh, currently, they use unleaded fuel, and we are making cars with leaded fuel. That's going to stop us from really doing much. But there, a little more marketing spending. And in R&D... Ah, let's put one point into top end. Why not? $100,000. Woo, there's, there's a reason why not. $200,000 get another interior. Uh, let's go to plus three on interior. We like interior quality. Make some comfy cars. Without spending too much on them. Mechanical fuel injection just unlocked. I don't think we're going to spring for that just yet. That's really good for performance cars. It's also good for fuel economy. But it's complicated. And it's uh, a lot to engineer. Okay, so, first month of the Coniglio 2 is out, as well as the Coniglio 1 at the same time. We are in pre-orders, but losing money by some margin that's less than our loan repayment. But our loan repayment is huge. It's going to stick around for, like, six years. So we need to be making more money than that loan repayment is, is costing us. And I think that means that the Coniglio 1, with a 12-month pre-order wait, is just going to have to cost more. We are, we are struggling with some mismanagement here. I'm beginning to feel like. So our desirability is low. Uh, there's apparently a 50% delivery delay penalty on the Coniglio 2. Even though we're only supposed to be like a couple months behind, and a 40% plus a smaller penalty on a Coniglio 1, even though we're like seven months behind. I don't understand that. That just seems weird to me. So our cash reserves are dwindling. We are starting to pay off our loan sum. Uh, I mean, our revenue is a lot, right? How much is our loan? Remaining loan, $200 million. We have $150 million. So putting the loan aside, we're still getting some money. I don't think we're going to go bankrupt over the loan just on its own. But we need to get our cars to be more competitive. So I'm going to stop this episode early. Uh, it's about time we did our first facelift of the Coniglio 2. But I also want to ask, what do we want to do with our small factory that's still making the Coniglio 1? So the Canelio 2, in theory, should become cheaper. Uh, I'm thinking our first facelift will show it to be a lot, a lot cheaper because we have that initial tooling cost as part of the last project. And we can make margins on it and set a lower price, which our customers will like because it's not very affordable for the city market, even still right now. But we need to sell volume at that big old medium factory. The Coniglio 1 is in a small factory, so we can put a new kind of car into there, but it's going to have to be made out of aluminum. 
And in the long term, it's going to be more expensive. So what do we want to put in that factory? Do we want to have an aluminum city car competing with our steel city car still? Will it be more of our premium or more like super gas mileage variety because it's lighter? Do we want to make maybe a sports car? It would be hard for us to make a proper luxury car without developing a new engine and engine factory, which is also still an option, but it's money is pretty tight right now. We could try and make a, we'd have to make a second engine factory actually either way, if we're going to make too many more cars, because our engine factory is stressed out. But uh, we could try and make a sports car that uses our 1.6 liter motor. That'd have to make a light sport kind of car. Or maybe we can make a little premium car. Because that box is smooth. It's not very big. It's not very prestigious. We could aim for that like lower end kind of luxury. Not luxury, but small car that's nice to sit in with a nice interior. And they have like a convertible trim or something. And besides that, we have room for another trim of the Caniglio 2. In the Canadian Eagle 1, our next trim was a wagon. And that wagon option exists here. With a little tweaking, we'd have it on sale. We technically have the option of a, like, minivan or delivery van. That looks rather ghastly, but we, we could make such an ugly thing. Or we could do a sedan, which would lean into that commuter market we do already get some sales in and potentially the premium market and we have the option of a convertible as well and in regards to new cars for our remember aluminum only factory low production numbers high cost we do have access to some cool looking sports bodies or we could even try to do the impossible and target something like the off-road market or something with uh, our tiny factory. What are our market sizes? So, grand touring and luxury, kind of out of our reach. Convertible and premium could be an option. Uh, a car that leans more into commuter. It does overlap with our Coniglio 2. That's kind of an option. Passenger fleet. Uh, they like vans, apparently. They like more seats. Uh, something with more seat rows could be an option, uh, especially if we did make another engine. It, it's really all on the table. If it's profitable enough and has a turnaround of like less than four years, we can afford to maybe make a second engine type. That's risky. So go on in the comments. Let me know what you think we need to do in 1963. But wait, we're not done yet. I almost forgot to test drive our new Coniglio 2 in modern traffic. So it doesn't look uh, really a lot more modern. It's still an ancient car, but uh, 50 horsepower over 40 horsepower and some actual gearing. Yes, finally we have a car that is safe to use in modern traffic. Well, I mean, as safe as you can be with them driving like that anyway. Jeez. It seems like uh, second is the slow gear on this one. through. Well, I said that. It's like every time I find a new gear, that's a slow gear. I'm sure the car is basically only going to be able to cruise and forth. And we get a nice, like a little bit of rotation in the steering. 
That feels pretty good for a front-wheel drive car. It's nimble. I can see why it came up with the higher sportiness score in-game. I like that. We can be... We can be little cheap cars that are fun to drive. But have to all be miserable. And because it's small, I can make the gaps here. So there it is. The Coniglio 2. Much more of a drivable car. The extra 10 horsepower and gearing makes a big difference. <laughs> 